Hey, thanks for joining me. This time I have a vintage Wanger or Vanger to show you. This is a 93 millimeter knife from the 1960s. Part of their Sportsman series. I believe this was called an All Sport because it has the regular set of tools plus scissors and a saw. So this knife uh, has a lot of different vintage features that uh, help date it from that era. First of all, it has a bale. And you'll notice Winger bales weren't as decorative as Victorinox's. They didn't have any kind of little collar down here or anything, but they do have brass bushings where they go into the scales. It has the old style awl with the cut out here for your thumb to get it out. Very much like Victorinox three-sided awl. Has the older federal style shield, not the square one with the rounded corners, but this more triangular one. They had enamel down in there around the cross. It usually wears off. This one's a little thin, but it's mostly still there. This one has hidden rivets. Um, so that plus the uh, tools, uh, style tools, dates it from the 60s. If you'd like to see an older one from the 1950s with exposed rivets, Joe at Messer HQ recently acquired a really nice one and did a great video on that. So I'll put that uh, link in the description box and you need to go check that out. Uh, this one has the old style can opener. This is the first style can opener that Victorinox and Wanger used. Wanger went through, I think, about four different variations of can openers. The other opening layer tool is the screwdriver cap lifter. Now Wanger put a wire stripper or scraper on theirs, but they didn't integrate it into the place where the cap lifter was, like Victorinox. So it makes for a funky looking longer screwdriver, but I kind of like that because it has a little more reach to it. Um, this one has a small clip point blade, and I noticed that the Wanger clip point blades are a little pointier than Victorinox, and they also come with, this one comes with a tang stamp, reads Wanger Switzerland. Large blade is spear point blade. The, spe the, the main blades on these older wingers are narrower than they are on the later models. The later models will have more of a belly. This one reads Winger Switzerland on one side and Winger Enox with a crossbow on the other. Now you can see that the blades and the tools on this knife are in really good shape. All I've done to this knife is uh, clean it and polish the scales. I have not done anything to the steel yet other than clean it, um, but I do intend to polish it. I'm just not going to use semi-chrome this time around. Semi-chrome is effective but it's messy and it smells very strongly. It's a pretty powerful chemical and you're not supposed to get it on your hands or face. So a uh, jeweler's rouge was recommended to me and I have bought some of that online. I'm waiting for it to be delivered. I have a couple of different uh, colors or, or finenesses coming, grit coming. And I'm going to use that with a soft cotton wheel with my Dremel uh, to try to maybe touch these up, take some of these little hairline scratches out. And I'll do a video on that, let you know how it goes. Scissors on the, uh, before 1972 on wingers looked a lot like Victorinox scissors. They had a screw pivot and a wire spring, not a spring bar. Now this is not the vintage spring. Uh, it came with a broken vintage spring. They were black and they were single leaf that kind of went from over here with a little return. They, they tend to break or always show up broken. I was able to get the broken stub out and retrofitted a large modern Victorinox spring in there. Works quite well. Uh, in this case it, it worked better than the last time I did it because I didn't have to crimp the return to get the scissors to close enough to fit them into the knife. So I get a bigger opening and uh, better spring action. So that turned out really well. Now, hidden behind the scissors, a very small um, nail nick is the saw. These uh, vintage saws had a very small nail nick and this kind of squared off end. And the back tools, this one has a Phillips driver, not a corkscrew. And we've looked at the awl. Scale tools, this one actually is supposed to have a toothpick, it's missing. I've ordered some large wanger toothpicks online. I was able to find some, and I'll be curious to see if they fit this older knife. If not, maybe it might be able to modify one to fit it. It does have the tweezers, and they're great tweezers. They're really big and beefy. 
I believe they're nickel silver. They have a brassish look to them. They look like brass, but they didn't clean up like brass. They kind of cleaned up like nickel silver. And they're definitely not an aluminum tipped tweezer. Anyway, they uh, they look like they ought to work pretty well. Let's side that go on. I think here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a couple other things about this knife. Um, if you want to learn more about these, there is a sales circular from 1963 on SAC Wiki that I found. And it's just a little two-page circular from a dealer. Um, but on page one, they have all these older 93 millimeter knives with this style can opener. Uh, and on page two, they talk about the new wanger, and they show nothing but 85 millimeter knives with the dog leg or plunge style can opener. So it, it seems like they were transitioning to a new smaller knife at that time, but selling both of them concurrently, which is pretty interesting. One other thing I learned from that circular is that they refer to the scales as tenite. So I looked that up, and tenite is just a, another cellulose-based thermoplastic, a lot like Celador that Victorinox used. But tenite was made by the Eastman Chemical Company, and that turns out to be George Eastman of Eastman Kodak. So that's interesting. They were buying their plastic from an American company to make their scales. I think that's about all I have to say about this knife. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Again, this is a vintage Wanger All Sport from the 1960s. I appreciate you watching and have fun collecting.